Oh man. <laughs> we're good. on. Yes, we are on. Hello. How's everybody's Friday evening? Um, welcome to another episode of Biohack My Best Life. Biohack Your Best Life. My name is Elizabeth. And I'm Billy Carson, aka Forbidden Knowledge. Forbidden Knowledge. Don't forget the foe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening everybody thank you for uh hopping in here tonight uh i want to say something real quick before we start i was okay. supposed to go live yesterday to do my my rant podcast thursday night but we got in a little bit late from our trip and i couldn't get on in time mm -hmm. so we pushed it back it'll be next thursday 8 p.m i'll be dropping links promoting it more i want everybody to get on this because i'll be talking about what's going on in um I ran. Yeah, it's right. going to be a really important episode. You guys definitely, definitely tap into that one because, yeah, it um, that one hit me pretty, pretty. Yeah, hard. It hit you pretty hard. You were crying. Yeah, it's a pretty tough situation. What's going on there with the women that are yeah. being um, oppressed, murdered? I don't call it. I don't call it. Uh, you know, death penalty. It's called murder. But we're going to go deep into uh, the Middle East, their religions the kind of spells that they're casting on themselves with their religion. Mm. And I'm going to tear down that religion piece by piece. When I get done with that religion, you're going to find out exactly what it is. You're going to know that religion for exactly what it is. Uh, and some people were getting concerned that I was talking about, uh, you know, uh, Elijah Muhammad, uh, uh, you know, the, the American version of Islam. Mm. I'm going to be tearing down the Middle Eastern version of Islam. The American version of Islam is far different and much newer. It's actually a new religion, uh, a much newer religion. It doesn't follow uh, the majority of the uh, the rituals that are in the ancient version of Islam out of the Middle East. Two totally different religions with a similar name. But anyway, I'm going to destroy. And I mean, when I say destroy, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to educate you on what's going on there, how it's happening, what's happening, how long it's been happening. And then I'm going to take apart that religion piece by piece. That'll be Thursday night, 8 p.m. Don't miss it. Destroy. He's going to he's going to destroy. I'm destroy going to destroy it. The religion. <laughs> destroy it. It's going to be That's come a big word. dust. That's a big word. When I get done with this, it's going to become <laughs> dust. We're going to break it all the way down. Oh, man. And anyone who's following that after if they listen to me, either they're going to the dog was going to re keep their brain programmed or they're going to start asking a lot of questions. Yeah. when i get done with it anyway let's get on with the show well real quick you guys should share that information too though i mean it's yeah. really horrific what's happening over yeah, there and it breaks my freaking heart so i really yeah. really if you guys could share and just help vocalize their voices <laughs> more push their 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 voices out there more so i mean that's all that i feel i can do from over here so I mean, it's just a shame what men have done to this planet we destroy women and every every turn we get every turn we get we destroy women we kill women we murder women we oppress women we mistreat women. We rap about mistreating women. We have songs about mistreating women. Uh, and uh, the, the majority of domestic violence cases are men attacking women. The majority of police brutality cases at home, in other words, domestic cases with police at home, are the male police officers attacking their own wives. It just, it just got, you know, it's just wild on this planet what we're doing to women uh, to suppress and forgetting that we all came out of a womb. Exactly. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Men come from women. Yeah. You wouldn't exist if it wasn't for a woman. I wouldn't exist. I mean, it's, it's just, it's really. Mm. You know, and I mean, that's a whole other podcast <laughs> to go into, but we, we need, we really need to address these issues and we have to understand, man, we have to uplift women. All women of all races on this planet have been all oppressed. All women of all races. Yeah. And uh, some more than others, nevertheless, all women have been oppressed. Their voices have been oppressed and suppressed. And at some point, we have to realize as men that we've gone way too far and that uh, even we've got women calling God a he. Yeah. Won't yeah. he do it? I mean, mm -hmm. we got to stop. We just got to <laughs> stop, man. It's out of control. Even God is a man. Yeah, I know. Everything is he, a man. He. But there's he no is. balance here. There's no feminine, masculine energy balance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are, um, you know, we're out of control. Men are out of control. Look at all the wars on this planet. Who's ordering all the killing on this planet? Who's ordering all the murdering? And people are worried about a devil. Yeah. The devil's wearing a military suit. <laughs> the devil's wearing a police outfit right. uniform. Yeah. That's the devil. Yeah. 
And so we, um, you know, we got to really take a look in the mirror, guys, and realize that we are the ones, and I mean all of us, because by our silence, that puts us in full collusion yeah. with the atrocities. Mm -hmm. By our own silence, by our turning our head and ignoring, well, I got to go to work today. I ain't got no time for this. I'm not doing that to my wife. But with our silence, we are participating mm -hmm. through silence. And so we have to finally, somebody has to stand up. Somebody got to say something. Yeah. You can tell it's manifested all around the world how manly this world is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> look, when you go to the, look when you go to the Middle East and when you go to yeah. these countries like e Egypt and so right. forth. There's no flowers. It's all just brown. Blah. And, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no, no feminine color. There's no feminine yeah, energy injected into anything. No, nothing. All right? Nothing. It looks like a giant bachelor pad. Yeah. 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 Does. So anyway, we got to do better. Well, we're going we're gonna to break it down next week, Thursday. Yeah. We are going to break it down. <laughs> you know, when I get into it, I'm going to snatch that religion right out of your brain <laughs> when I get done with you. <laughs> You're going to become an empty vessel ready for spiritual enlightenment when I get done with you. I guarantee it. Or you're going to run and put your head in the sand. There's only two ways out of this one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> you moving fast tonight. You up here. I'm like, whoo. They got me amped. I know. You are amped. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay. Um. Anywho. So, yeah, the title of the episode today is um, the placebo effect. Well, placebo versus nocebo and the manifestation of it all. Um. So, for anyone that doesn't know what the placebo effect is, it's basically thinking something that actually creates that manifestation in this this dimension so let's say someone tells you um you're taking this miracle cancer drug and you have cancer and then you take the miracle cancer drug and all of a sudden you don't have cancer anymore and the drug you find out was just a sugar pill that's the placebo effect now on the other hand there is a nocebo effect and what the nocebo effect is is let's say you don't have cancer and then you go to the doctor and you find out they do a scan and they find out, damn, you got a tumor. Now you have cancer, right? So now you, they give you four weeks to live and now you're going to die in a, this big whatever. And then you end up dying four weeks later. But then six weeks later, they actually mixed up the scans with somebody else and you find out you don't even have cancer. So that is the nocebo effect. Mm -hmm. It goes both ways. So all of these things, they, they manifest into this third dimension. And to be very honest, I think everything in this dimension is placebo, nocebo. Mm. Like yeah. All thought process. I feel like thought process causes everything to happen in this dimension. That's my yeah. personal opinion. And there's some scientific research behind that. I mean, there, there is effects of toxicity and different things that can affect you on a level because they do double blind studies, triple blind studies, and it comes out with certain things like, like grounding, for instance. So they've done double blind, triple, triple blind studies, which means they had a control group, a placebo group, and then they had a, a group that actually was being grounded. Mm -hmm. They actually found that the group that was being grounded, they had effects and and you know we're healing from whatever issues they had mm -hmm. more so than the control group than the placebo group so there is some effect on the body that that this this dimension can affect on on a level without thought process but i personally think it's all mainly directed by thought mm -hmm. yeah so. it's interesting you're talking about the the power of the mind one of the first Hermetic principles is all is mind. Yeah. That's the main basic, one of the most ancient teachings, which goes back to the original Kemetic principles long before Hermetic Hermetica ever, ever existed. Mm. And we're talking about the power of the mind. I know that when I was coaching uh, basketball, I was coaching the Junior Olympics, AAU, UAAA, and, and, uh, and other travel basketball. Mm -hmm. And the... Um, I told my, my, my team, we had to do better on free throws mm -hmm. and we were just, we were, you know, winning games, but games that should have been won easily were coming close yeah. because of free throws. Mm -hmm. And I looked into free throws and how can I get my team to do better, shoot better free throws. And what came up meditation. Mm. And so I saw this double blind study where they took 40 people. They took 20 and put them in a meditation and had them meditate for one hour a day. 
that they were shooting free throws and making every single free throw with the perfect form. Mm -hmm. They would see the ball go through the net on every single shot. The other 20, they had them shoot free throws for one hour a day, mm -hmm. about the same amount of free throws, but actually physically shooting the free throws. Mm -hmm. And then what they did a month later, they came back together with the meditation group and the group that physically shot the free throws. And guess who won? Mm -hmm. The meditation group shot more and made more free throws than a group that practiced for one hour a day for an entire month. Yeah. Yeah. The power of the mind. The power of the mind. Exactly. So this came about, well, the actual physical studies of, of the placebo effect came about back in the day. I think it was like the early 1900s when there was the war and the the people, the, the medical people ran out of morphine. And they, they had all these soldiers that were getting injured and it was mm -hmm. really, really horrible. They ran mm -hmm. out of morphine. So this one doctor administered this saline shot and told the, the soldier that you're getting morphine and his pain diminished mm -hmm. significantly. Yeah. He thought he, that he was getting the morphine so that his body wouldn't hurt. And his brain actually made those chemicals. Endorphins. Endorphins mm -hmm. are the reason you you get rid of pain. Right. So his brain created these endorphins mm -hmm. to make this pain go yeah. away right. because he thought that he was getting a morphine shot. Yeah. So that's when this whole thing kind of began. The studies into it began. But in ancient times, mm -hmm. it actually was already a thing right in the bible the magic touch now mm -hmm. you're healed right right, right. that's mm -hmm. the mind creating the that mind. that's the mind oh you can't see touch now you can see now you can see it's in all the ancient texts as you would know mm -hmm. and what's interesting when you're talking about like for example with that thing with the military the, the soldiers getting injured and getting the placebo shot of just saline sugar water mm -hmm. and feeling less pain there's also a flip side to that where uh they gave these soldiers well the, these soldiers were captured in war yeah and so they would, you know, America had a, a different type of a torture tactic where they wouldn't really put the hot poker on the people, but they would put the uh, a poker in freezing cold ice water. Mm. And then they would let it get really, really cold. Mm -hmm. And then they would the, and they would take a hot poker and sear it on some meat. Mm -hmm. But the person's blindfolded. They can smell the flesh burning. Mm. They would take the cold poker and then stick it on the person on their back and they would get blisters blisters right blisters right. all over their back because yeah. they thought they were being lit on fire with a hot poker mm -hmm. and it was just ice an ice cold stick but their brain their their ears heard flesh they smelled flesh they couldn't see what was going on and then when the cold ice cold poker was put on their skin the skin blistered up as if it was being burned. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. The power of the mind. The power. It's so powerful. Yeah. It's so powerful. And so it's even more crazy. There's different types of placebo too. So there's, there's conditioned placebo, right? So it's like, okay, I get migraines. The thing that helps my migraines the most are is Advil, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't really take, you see, I don't take any of this stuff ever. Yeah. But when I get a migraine, I'm going to pop some Advil mm -hmm. because I know it works. So let's say you... I don't know, take my Advil mm -hmm. and put some sugar pills in there and I get my my migraine mm -hmm. and I go to take the Advil. Boop. Now my body is actually creating these chemicals because of my conditioning that this is what fixes my migraines. Mm -hmm. So now my body will actually create what it needs to to get rid of that migraine, yeah. even though I'm just taking a sugar pill. Right. So that's a conditioned that's a conditioned mindset, mm -hmm. right? right? So, I mean, there's many different ways that that this is it's just amazing to me, to be yeah. honest. I mean, our mind is so, so powerful. You can look up Joe Dispenza's work and see his workshops. I mean, he's had some miracles happen. I mean, people that were crippled, he's meditated them and changed their mindset back to health. They, yeah. they, they walk. I was just listening to one today to a story about a woman that had this bone disease and she couldn't even walk without breaking a bone. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, she grew up in a very abusive household where mm -hmm. his dad, her dad used to beat the crap out of her, her mm -hmm. sisters, her, his wife. And so she actually, in my mind, created that disease in her body so she wouldn't be safe from him. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful the mind is. Right. So she would be safe from him because if he were to beat her, she would die. Right. So, yeah, you are the placebo, Dr. Joe Dispenza. That yeah. book is the shit. That's what I'm reading right now. That's yeah. why I, actually that's why I got inspired to do this podcast today because people need to know mm -hmm. how powerful the placebo effect, how powerful the nocebo effect is. Mm -hmm. But back to the woman. So 
she uh, started going and working with Joe Dispenza because she became her illness. So her thought process every day was, okay, I'm going to try to get to the grocery store, but I can't buy too many groceries because if I carry too much weight, then this bone's going to break. Da, da, da. So she became, it was her thought process all day, mm. all day. So Joe Dispenza, she went to one of his workshops, started working with him and changed her mindset completely, mm. completely. And I think it took, I don't know, two, three years, but she completely shifted her mindset. And now there's no evidence of that bone disease. Wow. Incredible. Anymore. Yes. Yeah. It, it's so, the mind is so powerful. And we keep saying it over and over again, but it really is. What's one more example before we dig a little deeper? I had a very, very good friend of mine I went to high school with, and uh, both his parents were great, great people, phenomenal human beings. They always showed me, showed me respect, dignity. They always offered me a drink of water or whatever when I would stop by. Very kind, nice people, hardworking people. Uh, one day, his father uh, realized his stomach was swelling up. And so he finally said, you know what? This has been going on for a couple of months. I got to go to the hospital. Went to the hospital. They told him that he had uh, cancer and that he only had two weeks to live. Mm. Do you know that two weeks to the day he died on two weeks today, sitting yeah. in his chair in the house two weeks to the day? Mother then goes in, says, I'm having you know, some, some pains in my stomach about three or four months later. Mm. Tell her she's only got a couple of weeks to live. Two weeks later, she dies on the same exact day to, to the day wow. they died. Uh, you know, so both his parents died within just a few months of each other. Mm. Just wild. But as again, when like we were talking the other day, doctors should never tell somebody a specific date right. when they're going to die. No, that that's the nocebo effect. Yeah. So listen to this story. One more story. So there was an old man, right? I think this old man was like 90 years old. And he went to the doctor and got a scan. And they find out that he had a dark spot, a spot on his lungs and that he only had a couple weeks to live. So mm. he dies a couple weeks later. Boop. But then they researched the guy and he actually got a scan back in like 30 years prior. He had that dark spot on his oh lungs. Oh, my God. So he had that his yeah. whole life, but he didn't know that he had it. So it wasn't activating in yeah. his body. Right. They activated him. Exactly. Once a doctor tells you, yes. once a doctor tells you that your body goes into that mode, that shutdown mode. Yes, exactly. It's well, it's epigenetics. It's yeah. the environment that's changing gene expression, mm -hmm. which changes protein synthesis within your body. So mm -hmm. it's changing all of these different chemicals within yourself yeah i mean you can literally switch genes on switch genes off mm -hmm. just because you have a whole entire family that has had cancer doesn't mean that you have to have cancer right. you have that cancer gene but it doesn't mean that that gene needs to turn on right because your outer world your external world even your thought process or mostly in my belief your thought process will either turn those genes on or turn those genes off and right. which creates different things within your body Correct. Anything that is considered, quote unquote, hereditary isn't actually going to happen until the gene is switched on exactly. like a light switch. Exactly. Which can exactly. be triggered by conscious thought can yes. switch the gene. Oh, Absolutely. diabetes runs in my family. And, yeah. You know, yeah. these kind of my, these kind of statements that we make. Oh, they're 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 You're talking to over 70 trillion cells. Mm -hmm. And whenever you think or yeah. whenever you say your cells are listening to right. you and everything and, and you you really have to pay attention to that because mm -hmm. they're responding they respond. to your thoughts. They're responding to your voice, to your words. It's mm -hmm. so important to know that and to be intentional about yeah. everything you think and everything you say. Right. Because each cell has water in it. Mm -hmm. and each cell, your body is made up of 70 percent water. And so we know through real scientific studies mm -hmm. that. Conscious thought backed by vocalization, in other words, cymatic frequencies coming out of your throat, talking, uh, can actually affect the physiology of water. And so if your body is made of mostly water, every time you speak, every time you utter a word backed by conscious thought, because the words are coming based on what you're thinking, that now has power over water, which is in your body. So every cell is listening to everything you say, and everything you say is being remembered permanently by every single cell. Forget the mind remembering. On a cellular level, you're remembering oh, yeah. everything. And those cells respond to those cymatic frequencies coming out of your own vocal box. Yes. And they respond to your thoughts because your thoughts are energy. And energy is, I mean, we're all energy. That's what we are at a quantum level. We're energy, just we're information, basically, little atoms and information. Mm -hmm. So uh, it responds to everything, everything. Mm -hmm. So you really just have to be careful 
and and just think healthy. You know, you'll you'll catch me. I'll catch you right. all the time, which all I love. Time. I love that. because because we need that. We need the reminders mm -hmm. because through our lives, we've been conditioned on all these negative ways that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, right. because and, and, and epigenetics just became a thing. Yeah. So it was always thought, OK, because your parents had it, then you have it. Mm -hmm. So now that belief system, you have that instilled in your body in yeah. your cells in your mind mm -hmm. in your subconscious and your subconscious runs you no i'm not asa akira um your subconscious <laughs> runs you 95 percent of your thoughts yeah. are subconscious right right you only have five percent conscious thought process maybe more if you're getting conscious and you're trying to be very intentional about what you think but most of your thoughts and your day-to-day -day movements are subconscious mm -hmm. so once you get programmed in that way it's it's it takes a lot of work to deprogram yourself and yeah. to believe something different. Mm -hmm. So this new epigenetic studies, you know, I mean, we just found this out a couple years ago. Yeah. I mean, the past decade, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's all new. It's all coming to the forefront. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it for a long time. I've been talking about it for years. Mm -hmm. I remember people laughing and making comments underneath my posts, like, mm -hmm. you know, this is pseudoscience oh and, and you're crazy. Well, because you're this going stuff. against the grain. Yeah. Yes. And now it's like, being taught in universities and colleges all over the I know, world. I know. Well, all your stuff, <laughs> all your stuff. But that's that's how it is, right? What is the what's the the things that it, it goes by? You're highly um, criticized, highly criticized yeah. until and then, and then it's widely accepted. But it yeah. goes through these stages, right? And that's what everybody has gone through that has made these huge discoveries. Look at mm -hmm. Bruce Lipton. Mm -hmm. They called him a nut job. Yeah. Well, of course they called you a nut job. Right. They called um Dr. Daniel Amen a nut job mm -hmm. for doing these spec scans saying that your brain controls he all got, these different things. He got death threats. death threats. You got death threats. I got death threats. Man, these people are here. It's, it's like, wild. It really is. But that's how deep rooted this conditioning is within yeah. our bodies. Like, you know, once once your brain gets shaken up, your brain hates change. Yeah. That's the one thing that your brain does not like, because your brain, whenever things change, you feel a little unsafe. So your mm -hmm. brain is always trying to keep you safe. That's why it hones in on all these negative things all the time, because it's always trying to keep you as safe as possible. Right. So it's it's really, really difficult to to, you know, change these things because mm -hmm. it's instilled in these synaptic connections within your body within your brain it's instilled in your your yourself right so it just it takes so much it takes a lot of work that's why you have to have somebody that can you know hold you accountable yeah so elizabeth holds me accountable i hold her accountable yes, yes. you know some of you you look, some of you may know my story about what i went through with the veganism you know i was a vegan for many years decades and i started to develop an autoimmune problem where I would break out in rashes and hives and didn't even realize it was the food I was eating that was killing me. I mean, and literally it was killing me. And so now I've changed my whole diet around. I went through this whole thing. It's a whole other podcast. But however, from time to time, something that I eat or something that I see or touch or something that I'm thinking can actually begin to trigger that same autoimmune response. And some of those rashes try to come back. Before they used to just take over my whole body, face, my feet, my palms, my hands. You've seen how bad it can get. You've mm -hmm. seen them take over a whole arm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's gotten down to now where I've, I've, I'm so good, I'll just get a tiny bump here or there. And what do I do now? If I, if I, she looks, if she sees me, it looks like I'm panicking or getting ready to panic. She will calm me down and tell me it's not going to happen. It's going away. And then I'll start talking to the actual bump, like the rash, and I'll be like, no. Like, I'm telling it, no, I'm transmitting to it. No, you can't take over my hand. You can't take over my body. I literally talk to the autoimmune and tell it, no, if you can't do this to me. You can't have me. And guess what? A day or two later, what happens? Yeah, it's gone. They go away on their own now. No medicine, no prednisone, none of that. I haven't been on prednisone how long now? Yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah. Um, it's been probably about a year. Yeah, about a year, about maybe. A year. About a year. Yeah. No prednisone. No medicines, no special creams, right? Nothing but okay. conscious thought and speaking, vocalization, cymatic frequency, talking to my own body, telling it what's wrong with it, it's gonna be fixed. Yeah. And commanding it into existence and her catching me when it looks like I'm doubting and re and reiterating to me, no, you got this. Mm. This is not gonna take over. This is not gonna take over your body. This is not going to affect you in any kind of way. Mm -hmm. So you have to find somebody that can hold you accountable. Yeah. Because that way you guys can back each other up. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, we kind of had that conversation today, too, because I realized so since the Iran thing, I've just been a little bit looking at the world like it sucks and it's horrible and there's evil people everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, I hate everybody. <laughs> but I realized that yeah. and I'm like, I can't I can't look at the world like this because mm -hmm. that's going to create sickness within my vessel. And I, I don't I don't want sickness in my vessel. And, right. and whatever you feel like the world is, is what it's going to be back to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to feel like the world is evil and there yeah. are evil people everywhere and doing killing. I, I just, I don't want to think like that. So I told you today, I'm mm -hmm. like, listen, yeah. every time we bring up something negative or think something negative or speak something negative about what's happening in the world, let's balance it out by something that's positive right. as well. Because I don't want to instill that negativity within my body, within my brain, within my cells and create inflammation within my system because I'm feeling stressed out and nervous and mad mm -hmm. because of these evil people, yeah. right? So you have to, <laughs> there's balance. balance. Because, and then I want to manifest and project the world that, that I want. Exactly. To be beautiful and loving and amazing. And when this love, when you can feel this, this deep love, whether you're in love, whether you're looking at your child, you're looking at a pretty flower, <laughs> He got me the best flowers. He got me a hundred roses. It was so amazing. I love them. So things like that. Yeah. But that right there, that feeling, that emotion within my body that I just had, it let it released so many different love chemicals and mm -hmm. love chemicals within your your body are healing. Yeah. They're healing. So it's it's I mean it's really amazing what emotion, thought process can do mm -hmm. for your. So for oh, your vessel, does, for your life. It does a lot. does yeah. a lot for your life. And I even told you, if you told me that, I said, what? I said, I know I have to post things on my platforms that are talking about some of the negativity in the world. But yeah. I said, I have to balance it out. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to also make sure that it's it's good stuff coming behind it. Positive yeah. stuff, inspirational, motivational stuff. But at the same time, I still have to bring up some of the, some of the darkness. But I also then have to remember, I have to have balance. Mm -hmm. There's some accounts out here that specialize only in pushing out the darkness. Yeah. And the problem with those accounts is they give you a lot of information, mm -hmm. but they give you so much information that's so dark. It's just like watching CNN. Yeah. There's never any light in any of those posts. And so you can go, you can scroll down that account for an hour and you become filled with complete darkness. Yeah. Ooh. And it's hard to get it out of your body. A lot of people struggle to release that from their vessel. And they take that out on other people without even understanding what's really know. going on. Exactly. Because they're so filled up with stress. So if yeah. you watch CNN all day and you're just sitting up tight and your your muscles are tensed up and you're looking like, oh, and then thinking about this and then your thoughts are negative, negative, negative. You are going to act inappropriately when someone triggers you. Mm -hmm. The minute you get triggered and you go into reaction, you go into reactive brain, cerebellum, your lid flips, mm -hmm. and you lose that blood flow to the, the neocortex, which is your logical thinking mind that can bring you back from that craziness, and you just become reactive, all of that stress is going to manifest out, out outwards yes, <laughs> on other it. people. That is, It's undeserving mm -hmm. of, of the, the stress. Right, <laughs> it's right. not even coming from the situation. It never usually even comes from the current situation, your anger, your, your stress, your anxiety. It all pretty much comes from old stagnant energy that you mm -hmm. never emotion that you never let out of your body. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And right. You're right. Terrence tech. We are biomechanical electromagnetic yes. beings. Yes. We, we are, are. We are biological machines mm -hmm. that take programming codes. And yeah. so when you're talking about the placebo effect, we're talking about the brain releasing hormones yes. and those hormones have what on in them program codes. Yeah. Those program codes go to different cells in the body and activate and deactivate certain things, mm -hmm. which allows you to act in a specific way. Right. And when you're operating from the subconscious mind, you are allowing those program codes to yes. rule your reality tunnel and not your real wakened mind yes. to rule your reality exactly. tunnel. Exactly. Exactly. That controls your, your gene expression on off, whether mm -hmm. your genes turn on or off. Right. When you go into a stress state, I think that the, the stat was, I think it turned on like 160 stress, stressful proteins that started producing all this stress chemicals within your body. Just a thought, mm -hmm. just a thought yeah. created that. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, it's so powerful. <laughs> yeah. You have to learn how to reel yourself in because that placebo effect is real. You can placebo yourself into a sickness. Yeah. You can nocebo yourself, I, should, I mean, so I should say, into a sickness yeah. by 
by um, by stressing out Stress, over things. Thought process, exactly. Yeah. Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease starts with inflammation. When mm -hmm. you're stressed out, your body becomes inflamed. Yeah. It's it's proven. This is scientific evidence because yeah. that that this is what happens. And there's been a huge uptick in autoimmune disease mm -hmm. in the past, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah. Crazy. It's out of control. Out of control. 40 yeah. years, actually. It's, it's been a huge right up, uptick in autoimmune disease. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, I think, too, since the whole um, sickness happened, I really think a lot of people just, I don't know, the, the stress levels are getting oh, the way stress too is high. Way out, the stress is way out there. And all this craziness is manifesting mm -hmm. everywhere because yeah. of the stress. People don't know how to deal with it. They don't yeah. even know that they're stressed out. People don't even know they have emotions. No, no. <laughs> the majority of the, the budget uh, for the U.S. government should be spent on mental health. Yes. Uh, obviously it's going to be spent on military, but if it was at least if imagine if a third of the military budget was oh, spent man. on mental health. Oh man, we would be a whole different nation. It'd be a whole other world. It would be a whole different world. Yeah. A whole different world. Right. Because you know what? It's like even the people that are, are prisoners, right? These people that have caught cases and all these things. I mean, your body, when you go into these reactive modes, I mean, it's you, you're not yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not spirit. You're literally this vessel reacting to the stimulus. You're mm -hmm. not there. You lose it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. I kind of, I just, I, I feel like these, this rehabilitation jail, they don't rehabilitate no. you there. No. All they do there, all that happens there is you get better at doing whatever you did to get in there in the first yeah, place. Exactly. Because you're surrounded by people that are like-minded mm -hmm. and, and they really should focus on, they should do brain training there. They mm -hmm. need to do modalities there to really rehabilitate people. Yeah. Cause that's what it takes. Right. That's what it takes. Do you think putting people that are stressed out and, and lost their mind and maybe killed somebody or did something really, really horrible. Right. Do you think that putting those people into a box with rotten food and a whole bunch of other people that are on the same wavelength as them, treating them like dogs, like animals, yeah. not even like humans at all. Right. Do you think that's going to rehabilitate somebody? No. I mean, it's just ridiculous. No, Where is just, the thought process? They're just cattle to them. Money, exactly. Money making up. Each body is a money making opportunity. Exactly. That's why you have to take capitalism out of prisons. Mm. You have to take capitalism out of pharmaceuticals. Yep. You have to take capitalism out of education. Mm. You have to begin to remove capital. Capitalism can't be in everything. Yeah. And as long as we have capitalism in everything, we're screwed. We can't have it. You cannot have it in prisons for sure. No. Uh, no. And, and healthcare can't have no. Ca if we didn't have capitalism in healthcare and pharmaceuticals, there wouldn't be 90 percent of the diseases would be gone. No disease. Because mm. why? They would have already given you the right the right uh, cure for it. Right. Not the fake cure, the right mm. cure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so but it's really wild. You know, you know, one thing I remember now when I was teaching one of my manifest destiny classes, I was talking about the mind, the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. And there was a scientific study where they took a group of people out of the laboratory and just they didn't tell them what they were doing. They just walked them through a busy city mm -hmm. about maybe five or six blocks and then walked them back to the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And then they sat them down and then they asked them questions like, what did you see out there? They asked each individual person, what did you see? People started you know, writing down things that they saw. And then they put them under hypnosis, each mm. individual person. Under hypnosis, their brain had taken in everything. 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 License plate numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the names of signs on buildings of stores yes. that they walked by that they weren't even having the cl last clue of going inside of. The things in the windows of some of the shops, conversations that people were having. Yeah. Yeah. Very detailed information. Your brain, your mind, your sensory perception system is and taking in everything. 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 That's Permanently. Why, yes. Forever, yeah. forever. That's why you really have to be careful. What are you watching? What do you watch on TV? Mm -hmm. What are you listening to? Mm -hmm. That's why That's why it's very good to go to a flotation therapy place because our brains are full of stimulus all day. Even mm -hmm. if you sit in a dark room, you're hearing sounds from outside. That's yeah. stimulus. Your brain never has a chance to shut down, mm -hmm. to relax. You, you never have a chance to in this busy Western world because mm -hmm. literally, literally, even though you're not consciously recording everything that's happening, your brain and your body is consciously recording everything yeah. that's happening. Mm -hmm. So flotation therapy is sensory deprivation. You go into a float tank, you go into skin temperature water mm -hmm. and water filled with um, magnesium, Epsom salt. And you float buoyantly, like you you effortlessly float on mm -hmm. top of this water. And it's dark, it's silent, yeah. and your brain automatically 
goes into theta, mm-hmm. which in theta, you can actually reprogram your subconscious mind. Yeah. So if you have if you have negative thought patterns, go to a flotation therapy place and meditate in there. Meditate in there. Try to try to think very, very positively. Mm-hmm. Try to reprogram yourself because you can, because your brain waves are in that state where it, they your subconscious you can maneuver and and manipulate your subconscious mind. Yeah, in float it's tanks. a great experience. I went in the float tank. Yeah, uh, I had the greatest meditation that I've ever had in the float tank. Usually, when I meditate, I see uh, geometric figures or shapes. Mm-hmm. In the float tank, I saw what looked to be almost like a mist, and it was almost like I was riding up and floating on clouds. It was mm-hmm. one of the wildest yeah. experiences. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, you have the sound deprivation. There's no sound. Yeah, you're no floating light. on top of this magnesium, this salt. Skin temperature, so you don't even feel like you're floating. It feels like you're locked into place. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It's such a cool thing. It is. I highly recommend the float yeah. tank. Yeah. It, like when I go and float, it feels like I'm, I start like this, but then by the end, yeah. I'm standing up in space. Yeah, That's what crazy. happens to me. It's incredible. It is. Yeah. It is. I've reprogrammed a lot. I actually, okay, so my girlfriend, she's a, um, she reads people's um, ast- astrological maps, right? And in order to do that, you have to know what time you were born. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time I was born because I was adopted. So we both went into a float tank. We both meditated on the time that I was born. Mm -hmm. And we came out with the same answer. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. (laughs) Wild. Everything exists in the universe. Everything you want to know, all knowledge, all wisdom, all understanding, Mm -hmm. every invention, every great idea, Mm -hmm. it already exists. It's in the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. So you just tapped into information that was there. And was stored in memory from when the time you were born. Yeah, well, it's all everything is everything, like that yeah. movie. Everything is everything. Right. You know, there's infinite possibilities at all times, everywhere, mm-hmm. and you know that yeah. because you're stardust, basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have a piece of what created this whole thing. Right. So inside you, in your consciousness, you know everything. Right. Everything. You just have to learn to tap into it. We've been so shunned and just, I don't know, just bogged down to believe that we're so we're not powerful Mm -hmm. that we have to depend on him to be powerful when the power is within us right to do anything exactly and somebody's just made a great comment about affirmations that's why i wrote the song affirmations Mm -hmm. by forbidden knowledge you can listen to it on youtube for free or spotify or apple music Mm -hmm. and what i did was I, i realized the power of the placebo nocebo and i realized the power of speaking positively to yourself out loud vocalizing it. So a lot of people were sending me messages that they, they didn't know what affirmations they couldn't remember affirmations. And so I made a song called I Affirmations. Love it. That's my favorite. That's my well, other than be strong. Yeah. I like be strong. <laughs> thank you. Those thank two. you. Yeah. <laughs> and but the power of it is you can memorize it mm-hmm. because it's to music. And then all of a sudden I covered all levels, all aspects of life with the affirmations. And there's something in there for everyone. Yeah. And I put it on a, on 432 hertz frequency yeah. so it can resonate with your cellular you know, uh, body in your brain and your mind. Mm-hmm. And because you're speaking it, you're now reprogramming your DNA yeah. every time you listen and play the song. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of the ways that I actually it took me about a year, but I was in a very, very bad place in my mind. I was in a very I had a very negative thought process. I had gone through a really, really hard time, yeah. a really bad breakup. And so I needed to reprogram myself. Mm -hmm. So every morning, what I did is I got up and I immediately wrote in my journal. I got everything out of my mind that I didn't want to think about. And then I proceeded to write five things I was grateful for. Mm. Pen to paper. That really enhances that that reprogramming of your body minds, right? Yeah. So I would write down five things I was grateful for, mm-hmm. and then I would turn on affirmations. Yeah. And I would li- listen to affirmations all morning. Mm. I'm driving my son to school, listen to affirmations, playing affirmations. Yeah. And that really reprograms my thought process. Mm. It took a while, yeah. but it, it it really did. It works. Yeah. It works. Mm-hmm. If you write down uh, affirmations on a piece of paper or yeah. put them in a note on your phone, you know, so you write down um, nine positive affirmations about yourself and then you uh, I'm sorry, six positive affirmations about yourself, six positive affirmations about yourself. And then you speak them to yourself six times a day. And then so you read them out loud. You open your phone, you get that paper out, read them, read all of those affirmations every six times. I'm sorry, this, I'm going backwards now. It's six affirmations, speaking them nine times a day mm-hmm. for uh, three weeks. Mm-hmm. 
then you'll have reprogrammed your DNA. Yeah, yeah. It's 21 days usually right. that it, it takes to create yeah. a new habit. So Correct. 21 days will, you know, if you if you wake up, think about, even think, just think. But I mean, pen to paper is very strong. So I, strong. I, I always, yeah, I always yeah. suggest that, that you write it down. But five things that you're grateful for, the minute you wake up, five things that you're grateful for right before you go to sleep. I mean, that really, really changes things. Yeah. When that grateful feeling, that's love. Mm -hmm. When you're grateful for things, that's love within your body. That's yeah. no stress. And that's love hormones getting released in your body. That's healing. Right. Healing and safety within your vessel, which mm -hmm. creates a healthy vessel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's how you do it. And, um, you know, and somebody, I saw somebody in the comments said, you making songs now with a question mark? Well, mm -hmm. 340 produced songs uh distributed globally yeah and uh, uh i was fortunate enough to be produced to, to produce an album that was on billboard for uh for eight weeks in four categories in 2018 and i have right now three music plaques on my wall yeah yeah so from charted songs that i've uh produced and also some of them i actually appeared in mm -hmm. and we just produced the uh the black knight um uh, album for the black knight satellite documentary fire, fire. Thank you. And yeah, you even uh, rapping. You even I'm, you had yeah. a little performance. You were going hard <laughs> on the boat, like, hey. I performed on the boat. <laughs> but that song is actually playing right now about seven hundred times a week yeah. on radio. Yeah. Black Knight, the main yeah. the theme song. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, yeah, it's actually on the charts. I think it's chart charted at number one thirty in the in the global top one fifty yeah. independent chart. Fire. Not bad. Hey, you know, so yeah, I do produce music. I have songs out there. Just look on your Apple Music or your Spotify for four with the number four, four bit in knowledge, and you might find something you like. Can you guys see? That's him performing on the cruise ship in Egypt. We were on the Nile. Look, fire. He's going in. I love it. Fire. <laughs> we had a good time that on that was cruise. Fire. We had so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait till the next cruise oh, uh, I know. next year. Oh, we're going to be talking about it tonight. I told yeah. people we're going to be doing a little updates. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else about the placebo? I, I just think people need to understand how powerful your mind is and how powerful thought process is, how powerful your vibration, your energy is, because it affects everything. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to live your best life, your happiest life, and attract yeah. everything that's for you, you want to try to keep it positive. Mm -hmm. You have to try to understand that you are healthy. And our bodies are so very intelligent that you have everything inside of you to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. You have pain meds within you, right? I mean, you have literal these chemicals that make up these drugs like, like Vicodin, mm -hmm. you have the same chemicals within your body that you can create the same re reduction of pain mm -hmm. within your body. You have all of these, these magical things within your system that you can fix yourself. You don't need these outside sources to do anything for you. You have the power. You have it. Yeah. You know, and obviously, if you're bleeding out or something, you got to go yeah, to the hospital. Yeah, well, yeah. But what we're saying is the power, you got to understand. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you understand. get stabbed, it's like, yeah, you know, I mean, come if you're on. having some it's really, really we know. huge trauma. But you hear the passion. Right. What she's trying to tell you is we're too self reliant on outside yes. things yeah. versus understanding the power to go within mm -hmm. and something that needs to be practiced. Now, something about me that you know that I've never talked about before is uh, on, on any public thing where you've we've been there to witness it is that I, I'm immune to Novocaine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when I have to get Novocaine or any type of local anesthetic, my body doesn't doesn't it doesn't numb the uh, same numbing effect that a couple of those shots would have on somebody where their tongue would fall out of their mouth. And you know, if they were getting dental surgery and you're you wouldn't be able to feel your, you know, it takes maybe five to ten times the amount for me. And even then, still, I can feel it. Still, you, yeah, yeah, you can still feel it. And then I'm also immune to uh, the gas that puts you out. Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Yeah. So I had an anesthesia one time, and it's a rare situation. It's like one in 100,000 people have this where you have the waking anesthesia. So you get uh, anesthetized, anesthetized, but you can still um, hear and feel everything. And nobody, but you can't speak and you can't move. Your sleep body paralyzed. is paralyzed. It's like being in sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. And they didn't even believe me until I came out of it. And, uh, you know, my body was moving. I was able to talk again. And I told them all the jokes and everything they were saying and what they were, you know, doing. And they were like, oh, my God. And that's how I got diagnosed with with that. But 
So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when I go for oral surgery or, or things like that, and I have to get anesthesia or Novocaine, I have I go in what I tell you. You see, I have to get my mind right. I have to get my meditation going. I have to get my my myself mentally ready, so that I know that I'm going to have to bear some pain. Yeah. So I get into this meditative state, and you saw when I went to get my my mouth worked on, I put my earbuds in with noise canceling. I put my own meditation songs on. And I get myself into a deep meditation. And before you knew it, those four or five hours was gone. Um, and I got through all that, what would have been agonizing pain. Nobody, another person couldn't even withstand. Yeah. I was able to get through it. Right, right. And that's the power of the mind. It's the power of the mind. But your body, you probably create pain numbing chemicals mm -hmm. within your system. They yeah. actually did a study about kids that, that uh, got their wisdom teeth out. And so... They got their wisdom teeth out and there was a, a control group, a placebo group, and there was an actual group that was actually getting these pain meds. So the placebo group, they switched their medication out halfway through their, their healing and they still, their brains produced the, the chemicals that numb the pain mm -hmm. still with sugar pills, sugar pills. So, I mean, it's, it's possible. It's mm -hmm. doable. Yeah. You just have to believe <laughs> it's, yeah. it starts with belief. And we'll talk about another one real quick. Greg Braden is a famous video of Greg Braden. You can look it up on YouTube. He was in China. I showed this video, a video, a clip of this video in one of my manifesting doc, uh, one of my manifesting workshops on Forbidden Knowledge TV. And so basically what happens is they're at uh, in front of like, I don't know if he had maybe three or four hundred people there, maybe, maybe more. But live on camera with a sonogram, they showed a woman in a hospital. They were live in China. She had a golf ball sized mm. tumor in her bladder and the doctors have no medical equipment. The doctors simply put hands on the woman and they say one phrase, hook, sha, hook, sha, hook, sha, hook, sha, over and over and over again. The key to this, this uh, medical healing is that the woman's got to be in full co co uh, collusion with the doctors believing that she's going to be healed and the doctors believe that she's going to be healed that golf ball sized tumor begins to melt live on camera yeah. live until it's completely gone mm -hmm. it took about maybe not even 10 minutes that's magical yeah but real and it makes sense yes that's too why that's real incredible and so mm -hmm. greg Braden at the end he talked he interviewed the doctor the main doctor and said what were you saying what is wuksha he said that's our prayer he says that's a prayer he said well what does it say he said the prayer is it is done it is done. That's the prayer. It is done. He so said, intention, wow. intention. That's mm -hmm. another thing you have to think about with this placebo effect. You can't just be like, okay, today I'm not going to hurt. My back's not going to hurt. My chronic pain is going to be better. But you can't say that without intention behind it. Yeah. So you have to put the emotion, the intention behind these words, these feelings, and that will really increase your body's physiology to produce the chemicals that it needs to manifest whatever it is you're trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. So the emotion is really important when you're trying to manifest things, when you're yeah. trying to use the placebo effect mm -hmm. to heal some sort of something. You yeah. have to have that emotion and intention behind it because those people, they probably had the intent of healing the woman. So it is done. Yeah, It's done. She's healed, right? But the intentional thought and the emotion of the people that were there created that healing process because they were intentional about yeah. your healed. Exactly. And that's not even what the what the prayer was. Mm -hmm. It's it is done. It is done. Yeah. Completion before completion. That's how I pray. I command things into existence. I believe things are done before I can even speak them. Mm -hmm. That's how the power of the mind, it's the power of my belief in yeah. my in myself. And somebody asked a good question, Angel Reed, is it legal for a doctor to tell a patient that they're getting medication while they're not? Well, these people have entered a double blind study. So they sign off a document stating that they know they're going to a study. They don't know if they're getting the medication or not getting the medication or either their parent or guardian has signed off on it. And so these are studies that cost a lot of money to run these kind of double blind studies. They can actually do that. There's actually triple blind studies. So they they yeah. actually don't tell you whether it is a placebo or not. No, they don't ever tell, yeah, yeah, they they tell you. They don't ever tell you. They, yeah. And sometimes with but, it, even triple blind studies, the people that actually read the 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 results, mm -hmm. they they don't even know. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes they don't. So know. like for example, there was one that I was going to be a part of for this rashes that I was getting, but yeah. They told me you may get the placebo or mm. you may get the medicine. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I decided that I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I was like, well, I don't know. I'll do it. You know, no? that was about three, four years ago. Oh, okay. I wish I would have probably tried it now, but you yeah, don't know if you're going to get the medicine or if you're going to get 
the placebo. Right, right, right. And so they tell you ahead of time. So then they then you come back mm -hmm. like three months later yeah. and they, you know, and they check you and see, you know, your results. Mm -hmm. and you don't know if you got the placebo or or the or the real medicine. Yeah, I think well, just in some studies, most studies they do yeah. disclose that, but some studies they don't even disclose the the fact wow. that there's placebo within that study. Oh, but you're entering into that study, right? So I mean, yeah, yeah. you've already signed documents. Yeah, you're signing. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. You yeah, sign yeah. a document. You yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You you, don't you'll know. never right, know. Right, right. But when you sign a document saying, okay, so you don't, so the doctor has now the right to give you either or. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you'll never know. But you, whoever it is, has signed you into that study. Yeah, I think that's like in the fine print because even if the thought process of okay, well, there is a placebo group in here, and then yeah. there's a there's a group that's not and actually going to get the medicine, that will affect the results. Yeah. So sometimes I don't think they even disclose. You know, they, they, it's just oh, it's yeah. the way they word things. The word. But it it always is protective because you're yeah. entering into that specific study. Right? Yeah. So it, I mean, the doctors are already always protected, but yeah, they're protected. Yeah. But a lot, a lot of fine print there. But the one I was yeah, going to yeah. look to, they, to, they had a lot of. Uh, I, I would have known. Right. Now, I wouldn't have known what I got, right, right. but I would, would have, have known, known that I was, was going into a study, group. a yeah. control group. I mean, I usually when, when you're, you, everyone really pretty much knows that you have to have a control group. Yeah. So the control group is a, is the straight line, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the, you know, you go in there and this is what, this is the baseline of yeah. what it is, which is placebo, right? Now, which I believe nothing. another thing too, is that a lot of, uh, a lot of the time, not a lot, let me just rephrase that. Sometimes there is a, there's testing that's being going that's going on mm. and we have uh and nobody knows about it and you know i think that's from the government level down but we can't say what they're giving us i don't want to talk about it on this <laughs> oh are you talking about the the thing we talked about in one episode oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. that would be yeah we can't get the yeah. youtube channel yeah, shut yeah, down yeah, yeah, yeah. that's for forbidden knowledge tv platform yeah we'll talk about it on forbidden knowledge TV. yes we will yeah mm -hmm. exactly it needs to be talked about i know yeah they'll, they'll do they do some 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 studies over there yeah yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they... global, global studies <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yes, yes anyway mm -hmm. but yeah this is a great talk you know and and uh the nocebo you know, it, it's powerful. It is powerful. Because you really go ahead. Yeah. You we really are in a situation right now where there's so much stuff going on. We have to understand the power of how we're thinking, what we're saying, not only saying about ourselves or to ourselves, but what we're saying to other people. Because you can speak darkness and death into somebody, you can speak healing into somebody. The power is this says it in the Bible, it says it in many other texts, ancient texts. I believe these, these these words, you know, the tongue is a double-edged sword. And we have to understand that when we're speaking to somebody, we can become the placebo or the nocebo for that person just by what we're saying, especially based on our conviction of how we're speaking it. You know, so you have to be careful when you're speaking to somebody because you can really be a detriment to that person. If you see somebody and you think that they look like they're tired or they're sick, don't say, hey, you look really, you look horrible, you look sick. That is the worst thing you can tell somebody. I mean, you don't think that person knows they look sick? <laughs> no, I just walked in here. Yeah. It was funny about that is when I was sick yeah. <laughs> and I looked so messed up. I oh lost like 25, 30 pounds. I yeah. was looking like an alien for real. Like my face was all, <laughs> my head was this big, my body was this skinny. Yeah. And I come in, I'm like, do I look really bad? And I was like, you look amazing. You look amazing. <laughs> we told we told her she looked amazing. You look great. You look so good. You can't even tell you're sick. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. What we told I don't her. know what you're talking about. Now she found out, she found out that she didn't look so amazing. Yeah, afterwards. About a year later. <laughs> it came up again. We were like, man, you were through dealing. Yeah, you were, you were. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time when she was sick, everybody, my me, my sister, I know, like, uh, one great. of my sons. No, you look you look amazing. You look awesome. You never tell somebody that looks sick that they look sick. You don't speak that. No. You don't no. go, man, you look horrible. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. or man, you look a mess. You know, sometimes you see somebody look like they've been up all night or something. Yeah, yeah. you look a mess. You look worn out, man. Yeah, it's like, dang. 
you just set the tone for that person's whole day. Yeah, their thought process. Now mm. they're going to be ruminating about that that thought, like that that verbiage that you just gave them. Like, yeah. oh, I look like crap. Now they're going to be self-conscious and it's going to change their physiology, yeah. which will actually probably create them to look worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so. look worse or manifest some type of illness or yeah, sickness. Yeah, exactly. Never tell somebody that they look sick. Somebody could just be looking sick but not be sick. And now mm. you tell them they're sick and now they become sick. Right. Because you told them. Right. You can speak that into somebody's exactly. life. Exactly. Y'all, we're we're on these flights and these sick people are everywhere. They're surrounding us. Literally, this guy was coughing and farting and doing all this oh, thing. Man, and this so one, bad. it was a 15 oh, hour flight. So bad. And he was right next to us. He was coughing straight on you because you were right oh, directly like this. And yeah. I was literally like right here. So I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, the oh plane. My God. I'm like, <laughs> damn, guys. <laughs> I'm like, Liz. <laughs> It's your mind because you can't get sick that fast. I'm sick. You're like, you know, if, if you come in contact with somebody who's sick yeah. and they give you a germ or a vi bacteria or and virus, it takes, it takes a long time. Really. It takes three to five days for it yeah. to manifest. You can't get sick with them. But she had, you convinced herself. <laughs> she was like, oh, my, my throat. My throat. And I, you start, she started coughing. I said, wait, I said, calm down. <laughs> you, you're all right, baby. I'm it's going to take a few more days. <laughs> it's you that quick. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel okay because i don't feel okay because i thought it was swelling up <laughs> that guy was so sick he was so sick that was one of the sickest people I've ever been oh, on the airplane man with. but you know what we we protect ourselves with bubbles and yeah. we've we have never gotten sick yeah it's been never amazing not sick. on flights not on flights traveling okay. around the world you had to come all the way home to get sick in, no, in, your, in your backyard way, right. <laughs> i went home to get sick i literally went out with my girlfriends in detroit and got sick even though i had just traveled the world like 14 times yeah no. like, come on yeah, that's wild <laughs> that was really wild yeah, that's wild that We've been wild. everywhere. We've been drinking all these people's water and I taking know. showers in their showers. Right, and eating the food. Eating their food, going all over the planet yes. nonstop. And then you come all the way back to I know. your I house. In my backyard. I was oh, so, my God. That's so crazy. Mm. Ooh, that was a rough one, too. Yeah. Man, it's been about exactly almost a year mm -hmm. since I got sick. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You came mm -hmm. all the way back. I did. Yeah. I did. I had a little stomach thing because of some bad food the other day. You said you were nervous. I was, like, was going to turn back into the alien. I was like, don't get this. <laughs> don't, get, don't turn back into an alien now. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my crazy. bubble's been working so far. Yeah, I haven't had any no. sicknesses. Mm -mm. No, yeah. nothing, nothing. You've been real good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've been surrounded by by some sick people too. Yeah, everybody keeps coming up with this. Well, not anymore. Not, not as not much anymore. anymore. Yeah, yeah, not as much anymore. I think it ran through everybody by now. Heavy, but these people in the airports, I just, I, I feel like, man, these people, they want to get sick before they fly. It's like everybody's sick in the airport on the planes. It's like, wow. Yeah, you have to. They should do a, a test when you mm -hmm. get to the airport or just breathe into something. If you can't exhale and inhale all the way without coughing you probably shouldn't be allowed on that plane yeah. that's my opinion because yeah, these no, people are hacking up hacking. your guts yes yeah non-stop non-stop you gotta remember when, when somebody let me something when somebody coughs or somebody inhales a cigarette and blows out you see that smoke mm -hmm. and you happen to breathe that in do you understand what's happening <laughs> what's mm -hmm. happening is <laughs> what just came out of the the inside of that person's lungs actual molecules that have come up through their esophagus and out into the atmosphere and now you breathe it it goes down into your esophagus down into your lungs and then it sticks to your lungs those molecules stick to your lungs for the most part the rest of your life so what was inside of that person's body is now inside of your body so that's why you know I hate when you explain it like that because that's oh, a fact. I know it's really <laughs> disgusting though. <laughs> that means fart particles. You're literally inhaling poop. You're inhaling the poop into yeah. your lungs yeah. and sticking to your lungs on the inside. Lungs it's are very real. sticky. Lungs hold on to everything. It's really, really disgusting. You know, so all those been, it's really gross. All those farts and all <laughs> anyways. But I was gonna say, ugh, so gross, <laughs> so nasty. And you say it right in that moment, too. We were going up this <laughs> escalator, and this person fought in front of us and you're like oh now we are their poop is in our lungs and i'm like oh my god <laughs> why why we're taking them with us everywhere we go now oh gross hi courtney courtney's in here What's hi up, courtney. courtney courtney has a show every yes. wednesday evening at 8 p.m yes Easter. Her show is amazing. Yes, don't very, miss very Courtney's show Wednesday at 8 p.m. Wednesday 8 p.m. It's right an here. amazing show. Yes. She's an amazing psychic. She, she is. has great abilities. She does. Uh, and she consults us from time to time. She just does a great job of explaining things, mm -hmm. breaking down some of the science behind it, oh, taking yeah. away a lot of the woo oh, out good. of it. She's good. She's really, really amazing. So make good, sure you good. check out Courtney Kane's side show yes. on Wednesday at 8 p.m. on this YouTube channel. Absolutely. Yeah. 
back to the flight thing and everybody's sick. So we might be manifesting that because we're mm-hmm. projecting now it's in our subconscious because yes. it's happened so many times yeah. that now we're probably creating this reality. So we should really mm-hmm. we should really start saying people are healthy around Earth. What we you should know? do we is before we before we even get to the airport or yeah. on the way to the airport, we yeah. should be speaking and commanding that everyone is going to be healthy. Everyone's going to feel better. This going to be healthy. Yeah, everyone's healthy. Everybody's doing good. Mm-hmm. And and then we should do that as a study and try to manifest we healthier people on our flights. We need to because we were, we have manifested bad yeah. service. Before. We did. We did. We manifested bad service at, at restaurants. At restaurants. Before. Yes. We were getting some bad service three, four times in a row. Yeah. And then we started complaining about the bad mm-hmm. service to ourselves, not to yep. the people, because I never complain to the people because I don't want them spitting in my food or nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. And I still give them a tip. I just mm-hmm. realize, hey, this is something going. They're going through something right now. Yeah. But we were complaining a lot to ourselves, and then we would complain on the way to restaurants. Right, like, oh, I can't. This person's probably going to. The service is probably going to be bad. Yeah. We're projecting this. We reality. projected it, and then she said, "You know what? We're probably projecting this." So we started focusing now on positivity. Mm-hmm. The service is going to be good. It's going to be better, and it gradually it got better and better and better yes. and better. It did. And uh, no matter where we went, I know yeah. exactly. So that's what we need to start doing for the plane because. Right. I really think we're starting to manifest this. That was yeah. really ridiculous, the last flight. That we I never heard, I heard that was... many people cough. It was like an o- orchestra it, of coughs. I know. It was an orchestra of coughs, <laughs> but on top of that, you saw someone throwing up in the bathroom. Oh, the guy was throwing up his guts in the bathroom yeah. in, in, the, um, in the lounge, mm. in the uh, Delta Sky Lounge. So bad. So we got to start projecting positivity, health. Yes, health. Health. Uh, and speaking health on the people before we even get to the airport. Yep. Uh, so let's do that and yeah. see how we can affect the, our reality that way. Because you can. You can project whatever reality you want. Whatever yeah. you believe is what will be. Okay? Mm-hmm. If you think that yeah. your life sucks, your life sucks. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. If you think your life is amazing and awesome, then your life is amazing and awesome. And right. that's what will manifest. Period. Point yes. blank. If you want to simplify things, that's it. That's all. That's it. Mm-hmm. For real. One of the things I saw, Soulja. Thank you, Soulja, for being a loyal customer. Soulja uses the gold and colloidal silver. You can get that on forbiddenknowledge.com. Amazing stuff. Yes. It literally is amazing. Matter of fact, I bought you those roses. Mm-hmm. I, bought her, I bought her 100 roses yesterday. Yeah, it was so nice. Okay. <laughs> it was like the best. I love I loved it. it and uh, this morning, I noticed that some of the roses, the way it was so many roses packed into the vase that they some of them weren't getting water. Yeah. And so I added uh, colloidal silver. She added some more water. But the colloidal silver will extend the life of roses for about an extra week. Yeah. And when I came back in from lunch, the roses were perking back up again. Mm-hmm. It works very fast. And you can even wash your dish, your, wash your uh, your fruits and your vegetables in colloidal silver. So imagine ingesting some of that silver and some of that gold, which speeds up the synaptic process in the brain and everything else. But when you ingest it, it's also doing the same, having the same result on your body. Well, it's it really attracts, amazing stuff. It, it magnetically attracts the, the fungus and the viruses. It literally magnetically attracts it and like explodes it within your yeah. system. There's videos. You can watch this. Colloidal silver. Mm. They have videos in laboratories, not by Billy Carson, in real laboratories where mm. when the virus or the bacteria touches the silver, they literally explode. She's not exaggerating. They mm. actually explode. Mm-hmm. And so imagine that flowing through your body, what mm-hmm. it's doing to you. So it's amazing stuff. And you can get it on forbiddenknowledge.com with the number four. Use coupon code forbidden, four B-I-D-D-E-N, for a little discount on that, all right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to actually be running a flash sale this weekend. Yeah. I'm going to be emailing to our email list what the code is. Do we, should we, we don't want to say the code just yet. That'd it's going to start more. tomorrow. Yeah. 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 It's going to start tomorrow. So make sure that you guys, um, how do they sign up for our email list? Oh, go to forbiddenknowledge.com and put your email address into the subscribe box. And then you'll get an email with a special weekend code. Yeah, yeah. We're doing a, a quick little 48. I, I haven't decided 48 or 72 hours, but we're going to do a real quick flash sale. Yeah. Everything on site is going to be 20% off mm-hmm. with this code. But yeah. you have to be on the email list. So make sure you sign up for that. But we also send out blogs. We send out updates about certain things. So yeah, yeah make sure you guys sign up for the email list and also sign up for the text message service that you yeah. are going to okay are we moving into updates do you moving guys have into any updates last, now, have any yeah. last, last no that's it that, that was good okay. that's good yeah um so you're actually going to be picking somebody out of these our text message database that's going to be winning a uh, black knight satellite the original the one and only poster that's probably about 5 feet high yeah, 3 feet uh, wide it's huge yes yeah, 4 by six. Four by five. Oh, okay. Four by five. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's an amazing poster. It's a movie poster. So talking about the power of the mind, mm. 
The movie poster for the Black Knight documentary, which is now an award-winning documentary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We actually won an award, and we've been nominated for three and actually won one. Yeah. Independent uh, sci-fi of the year. Yeah, independent film. Independent mm -hmm. film, yeah, mm -hmm. of the year. So that's great. Now, so the, I made a poster two and a half years ago mm -hmm. for the movie before I even started writing it. Yeah. Because I knew that it was going to manifest. And mm -hmm. I manifested it through actually creating the poster before I even had the first interview, before, the first line written on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Even the full concept wasn't down yet. I made a movie poster. Yeah. That movie poster, that original poster, which I used to have hanging up in my house, has been in many photos that I've taken with people coming over to my house and stuff. Mm -hmm is going to be sent out for free to someone. You got to text me, text hashtag Black Knight. There's only a few weeks left for this. Hashtag Black Knight. There's two Ks, B-L-A-C-K-K-N-I-G-H-T to 954-245-0086. 954-245-0086. Be added to the text list. And somebody's going to be selected to get that brand new an excellent condition, mint condition movie poster with a floating frame. I had a custom frame. The frame itself costs about 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I will nice ship it one. to you at no cost. There's only one, too. It's only There's one. only one. And it's the original. It's the original it's the one. Original. It yes. is the original one. Yeah. Yes. I can even send them a copy of the receipt uh, for the company that actually produced it and made it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to autograph the back. Mm -hmm. So it's original and it's going to be autographed. Yes. So text... Hashtag Black Knight to 954-245-0086. One more time to hear. 954. I can cut and paste. Actually, oh. I can just cut and paste it. I, I have saved it. So make it easy for us. Oh, Boom. Okay. Oh, wait. Go. That's the rest of Oh, you didn't. Never did mind. Oh you, just, oh, you typed it? Okay. No problem. <laughs> We're fast. 954-245-0086. Right? Yeah, that's it. Getting it. 86. Yeah. Boom. Okay. Get on the text list because someone's gonna, some lucky person is gonna get that free poster, which is gonna be valued. Now the value's gone up because I'm autographing yeah. it. Number one, mm -hmm. number two, it's an award-winning movie now. Yeah, it's an award-winning. That's a big award too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Congratulations. Yes. Great. So in talking about the placebo effect, right? It's, sometimes it's hard to reprogram your mind, which I had a lot of trouble, which is why I dove into biohacking and all of these different holistic modalities, modalities that I've done. Um, which helps you reprogram yourself because sometimes just thinking you can't do it, right? Sometimes the, the change that you want, it's just so far out of reach. You don't feel like you can do it all yourself. So what I did is I did a whole bunch of modalities. I did use a whole bunch of technologies and I've done in my life probably now over 80 different holistic modalities to help myself with stress, trauma, get trauma out of my body, everything else, and create the best life that I'm living right now, which mm -hmm. is an amazing, I live an extraordinary, amazing, every day is a gift. So yeah. I wrote a book called The Recipe to Elevated Consciousness, yes. which has 46 different uh, modalities in there that help you to get rid of the stress from your body, get rid of the trauma from your body so you can actually manifest things. So the placebo effect can actually, you can create mm -hmm. and heal yourself through these things that help, yeah. right? Because someone was like, just stop stressing out. Well, how? How do I just mm -hmm. stop stressing out? So I wrote right. a book about ways to do so. And yes. it has my story in it. So if you guys want to grab that, it's um, on Amazon. Absolutely. Check it out, guys. It's a best-selling book. Mm -hmm. You're a bestseller. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. Thanks. So are you. Yes. I too. Absolutely. <laughs> and we do our bestsellers the right way. Mm -hmm. We don't buy our own books. No. People buy our books. Yes. And we become a bestseller. And we get the the uh reviews to prove it exactly yeah, yeah check it out on amazon and i think you're still number one mm -hmm. i'm still number one on amazon mm -hmm. yeah number one yeah. out of three million books in that category yes not bad mm -hmm. not bad <laughs> not bad for to be number not one after four years i think it's over 35 million books on amazon yeah and yeah we've our, our whole book list our, our the company's books that have been pr published by forbidden knowledge have stayed in within 100 yeah 100k Amazing. Mm -hmm. That's that's, almost, that's like that's out of like 35 million. So hard to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fire. I know. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And great question by David Fuentes. Billy, I have a flight tomorrow to Pennsylvania. Would like to recommend a safe flight affirmation. Hmm. I'll tell you the best flight affirmation because I use it every single time. It's two parts. The first part is I close my eyes. And then I envision my flight path because you're gonna know what your flight path is. You should know at least where your flight where your plane is mm -hmm. going. So if, let's say, for example, if I'm flying from Florida to California, 
I see the flight path. I see the little, you know, United States, like a map, and I see my flight path from Florida to, from Miami to, let's say, California. Now, that's one part. While I'm seeing that flight path, I'm speaking this out loud right there. I command that I arrive at my destination safely and on time. That's it. That is my affirmation for my flight. No, listen. So we were on this flight and there was a whole bunch of turbulence. I don't even know. Do you remember this? It was a while ago. There was mm -hmm. a whole bunch of turbulence. Yeah. And <laughs> you were like, I command that we get there. I command it. That's right. I'm like, yeah, command it. <laughs> Please. For both of us. Command it. And, and, hey, plane hey, calm we, down. We, yeah, we, we commanded our landing. We were super safe. Super safe. Mm -hmm. But that's my prayer. That's how that's my affirmation prayer, whatever you want to call it for flights. I do it every time. Yeah. And if I have multiple layovers, I do it before the next flight takes off. Yeah. Uh, and I do it right out loud. I don't mm -hmm. care who hears me or whatever. I'm going to do my affirmation. Oh, were, that's, my, loudly that's my prayer. That. He's yeah. loudly commanding that plane. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm playing on no games when it comes to that. I believe the power. I believe the mm -hmm. power of my own voice and my own my own consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I would do. Yeah. All right. Um, one more thing, if you guys want to, I'm actually, well, it's done now pretty much. So we're just getting it formatted at this point, but I'm writing a book called the mother earth effects with Olivia Smith, and it's available for pre-sale right now. Um, if you guys don't know about grounding or earthing, it is so, so important. It, there's these, okay. So the book is a compilation of stories about different women and how they've basically healed themselves of all these autoimmune, these horrible, horrific autoimmune diseases and they've actually grounded themselves and they've it has completely changed their life. They've healed from it. They've done triple blind studies on grounding, which proves the science behind it. That is not just the placebo that it's actually working physically within your system. Mm. So if you guys want to check out any grounding products, I know that they're running a bunch of sales and stuff right now, but it will change your life. Everybody that I've grounded, it's changed their life and now mm -hmm. they're obsessed, yeah. including you. Yeah. Including you. Yep. And then I came out and I'm like, make sure you put the patch on. He's like, I already got it on. <laughs> I already got my grounding patches on. I'm, I'm grounded right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, I was working upstairs on my laptop yep. with a yep. grounded laptop mat. Yes. So I'm, as I'm working, I'm grounded. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it just, it's just phenomenal. So uh, I highly recommend the grounding. It's changed my life. It's reduced inflammation. It's helped me with autoimmune response. Yes. I think um, that's a big reason, yeah. too, why you're better with the rashes and everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Think There's no about doubt it. about it. Because it's been about, almost a, probably about a year and a half that you've been grounding now. Mm -hmm. So you, the real effects don't take place. I mean, it's, 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 what's, what's the word? Um, it adds up over time. Mm -hmm. There's no amount of grounding that's too little or too much. Yeah. You should always be grounded right. because it will always, it, it will stacks up. Your mm -hmm. healing will stack up yeah. because now your body has the, the things that it needs to heal itself. Right. To heal itself, which mm -hmm. is the key, which is why I love. Yes. I opted out from getting surgery on my labrum. I tore my labrum mm -hmm. and I opted out from getting surgery. I decided to use the grounding instead. Yeah. And my shoulder is back. Yeah. I'm back shooting threes and everything else and yeah. playing basketball and, yep. and doing good. So uh, mm -hmm. it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked without getting surgery. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Someone just asked, how do they get out of depression? Let me just say, before I answer that question, so they did a study. I want to I bring up this stat real quick. They did a study back in the early 2000s that um, on depression medication, right? And the big pharma hated this because they found out that they actually started giving people, it was a nocebo, or a placebo versus, a, you know, pro, what's the, what's the depression medicine? Prozac. Um, I don't know the names. Of okay, them. there's a couple others, but so they did this study and they started giving these other people sugar pills, and the the findings were that 81 percent of the people that had sugar pills healed their own depression. Mm. So it was the mind healing itself. So the people that were actually deeply depressed, they found that it, the medication actually helped them. Mm. But 81 percent of people healed themselves. Mm -hmm. well, heal themselves off sugar pills. Affirmations is the best way for to to work on depression. Because your body is going to respond to the conscious, the, the, the vocalization, the conscious thought. So if, you, if you're depressed and you start speaking to yourself, and this is something I'm going to do at my workshops when I when my live uh, forbidden tour, mm -hmm. I'm going to have people standing up and jumping up and down, screaming affirmations at, at the top of their voice, because your body's going to respond to that. It's going to change your whole physiology. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a person that's depressed, I want to do those affirmations. I want to speak them out loud. I want to do them over and over and over again. You're going to convince your own self and your own power and your own uh, well-being 
And, uh, and I think grounding is a big part of helping with depression as well. Yeah, I think, well, grounding will help you because it'll kind of clear that fogginess out of your mind, that, that low energy. Now you're going to get into better states of sleep because you're grounded. And when you wake up, you probably won't feel as bogged down because you'll have enough energy from your deep sleep and your, the correct states of sleep that you actually got into. Mm -hmm. So now you have more energy. So another way to really heal depression through grounding, of course, but then also to do what you don't feel like doing. When you don't feel like getting up and moving and getting out of bed, you need to get your butt out of bed. Go outside, get some vitamin D, sit on the grass, go near water if you can. Water is great for all depression. Of, yes. Oceans, lakes. Yes. Yes, all Phenomenal. of these things, all yeah. of these things, sunshine, mm -hmm. get out in nature if yeah. you're depressed, get out in nature. Bodies of water were a miracle for me. Oh, I was yeah. going through a very tough situation about uh, 13 years ago, whatever it was. Yeah. And just being by the ocean, walking up and down the beach nonstop, mm -hmm. it just is now they did a scientific study on that and found that walking by large bodies of water, sitting in front of large bodies of water, mm -hmm. it slows the heart rate. It calms the body, it calms the mind, yeah, and uh, it's uplifting. Mm -hmm. So you know, all those things are things that you can do. It sounds like a lot, but it's worth it to it's get out of it without it. taking a lot of medication. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. seriously, it works. Trust me, I was in bed, I think, for two weeks after this terrible breakup that I had, and I couldn't get out of bed. I was literally so depressed, mm -hmm. just laying there, like uh, I was like an empty shell. Mm -hmm. But the minute I started getting out of bed and moving around and getting out in nature, it, it really, really helps. Yeah, get nature, rid of it. Nature's huge. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, under people underrate. Nature's underrated. It really is underrated. Yeah. And we've gotten so city ish, you know? I could mm -hmm. never live in a city like New York or Chicago. I just don't, I'm not a city girl. Yeah. I'm, Nature, nature yeah. all the way. <laughs> yeah, find a nature reserve, find a, na a natural park or a park yeah. near your house, something. Mm -hmm. Listen, just sit down and just listen to the natural sounds of the birds yes. and, uh, and the trees present. blowing in the wind. Get real present. Yes. Get exactly. out of your head. Yeah. Right. If you're depressed, you're probably thinking about things that have already happened to you. Yeah. You're thinking about past things that don't even exist anymore. Right. Get very, very present. Right. It's a whole euphoria. When you can are able to get your mind and body into presence, mm -hmm. it's literally so euphoric. It's a whole new dimension. Yeah. It you really have to remember is. that the past has already happened. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't exist even anymore. exist anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't oh, exist. The only place it exists is in your mind. Yeah. So the it. future doesn't exist because it didn't happen yet. Exactly. The because we know it's real is now. Right. We know the quantum quantum mechanics mm -hmm. proves that the future is multiple possibilities. Yes. Yes. So the only moment is, like you said, is the moment of now. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all we have is That's the moment all. of now. That's so it. get present in the now moment. Yes. And then from there, you can focus on the reality and the future that you really want to collapse into existence. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So last little thing that we're going to talk about tonight is 2023 and yes. our tours. That we're yeah. saying tours, guys. Yes, plural. Two hours. Yeah. yeah. Because our last one was so successful. I'm talking, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was literally perfect. Yeah. The people were perfect. The energy was perfect. Yeah. The knowledge was amazing. I mean, it was it was phenomenal. There was yeah. zero, there was nothing bad that happened. No. There was no bad eggs. There was no negativity. I mean, a lot of the testimonials that we've gotten that are up on the ForbiddenKnowledge.com site. They talk about how amazing and what type of family and connections they'll have for the rest of their lives. Yeah. That's how close these people right. got. Yeah, I know. It's just absolutely amazing. It was, mm -hmm. um, wow. It's one of those things where <laughs> it's a dream. It was a dream trip. Yeah. To have 70 people all vibing on the same frequency. Yes. With no negativity and everyone really uplifting each other and supporting one another and, uh, and becoming close friends, even a, uh, one couple got engaged mm -hmm. at the uh, Temple of Seti in Abydos. Yeah. You know, just an amazing trip. And mm -hmm. we're doing it again. We have a couple of trips, three trips next year so far booked that we're setting up, right? They're already yes. set up. We're, we're booking for them now. Yep, yep. So the first, oops, the first one is, um, let's see here. Hold on one second. Oops. The first trip is uh, in October and it's our Egypt tour. We decided to extend it a little bit. Um, how do I refresh this? I get this? it. I get it. Yeah. Yes, dude. Over here already. Yeah. Just refresh this like this. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, we're gonna cut. I'm gonna drop the link here in the in the chat. Okay, yeah. So this is actually so this last year's was a seven day tour. This one will be a ten day tour. Um, we're gonna go to a couple more places than what we went to this in this recent one. 
And um, yeah, I mean, it's all VIP. It's, it's private access. It's meditation in the King's Chamber. It's partying on a five-star cruise ship, which we'll have all to ourselves. We'll have a forbidden party again. I mean, we had all type of fun last time. I mean, so 10-day yep. tour. You guys can visit this link to find out more information. And, um, yeah, I mean, I would just suggest it's life-changing. It's life-changing. Literally life-changing. Yeah, life-changing tour. Mm -hmm. um, young, old, man, woman. Yeah. Everybody had a. Everybody, everybody was crying. Nobody everybody had a dry crying. eye. Right, but the last, yeah, last yeah. night everybody was crying. Yeah, people were emotional at many of the different sites. Yeah, they were. Uh, were. Because there was it's, a it's lot of emotion. It is. You, the energy there is different, and yeah. you can't talk about it. You have to experience it. You have to experience Seriously. it. And we had private access to a lot of places. Yeah. Yep. I had a temple priest give me a key to mm -hmm. unlock a temple that had been locked for decades. Yes. And yes. let only our private it group. It was the Temple of Isis, in. right? Temple of Isis temple at Dendera. Dendera. I was the first one in there. I was yeah. the first one in there yeah. after, after years. The energy yeah. in there was so overwhelming for yeah. me. It was. It started getting packed because our, our whole tour came in, so I had to leave early. I don't yeah. know if you noticed, but we had to. We was, couldn't was, speak. We had to be quiet, and we couldn't mm -hmm. take any video. Yeah, yeah. No pictures. No video. That's no. something that they'll never forget. There was technology in the hieroglyphs. Yeah, yeah. Inside that temple. Yep, yep. Then there yeah. is amazing. Amazing, amazing it place. Is amazing, amazing, yeah. amazing. So yeah, so I'll go to that link if you want to inquire about it. It's literally life changing. It starts October fifth, twenty twenty three. And goes to October 15th. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10 day tour, very extensive. We go to all the main sites. And yeah. of course, you'll be the tour guide. We'll have our expert Egyptologist, another tour guide. We'll have an armed guard, you yeah. know, great food. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, we're going to, it's super, super VIP. Yeah. Multiple armed guards. We, mm -hmm. we're, we're big on safety. Yes. Big on safety. Yeah. In this trip, you've seen some of the videos, maybe. We've had uh, military, tra uh, military, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, when they, military um, armed guard. No, when they're when they're oh, leading oh, us out. Oh, um, I forget police now. Escort. escort, escort. Yeah, we had military. military. Escort. We had military escort. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, military escort. We did. Uh, armed, AK 47s mm -hmm. And then on each bus, even though we had that, we still on each bus we still had armed guards on yes. each bus. Yes. To make sure that uh, we, we are as safe as we can possibly be, and that costs a lot of money, but that's the only way we ride. Exactly. I don't ride. I don't ride without uh, security. Yeah. Period. Nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. 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 Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So we're doing that tour and we're also doing a tour in Cambodia, which is going to be freaking amazing. That one is going to be in November. So not October, but November. Mm -hmm. And that one is a six day tour, a six day tour in Cambodia. You can talk about what exactly we're going to be seeing, but if yeah. you're interested in that one, email this email. Yeah. We don't have the link up for it on the website. So there's an email we just dropped business at forbiddenknowledge.com with the number four business at forbiddenknowledge.com anchor watt is the main site there obviously anchor watt is one of the largest temple complexes in the world at over 100 hectares and the uh the it's an amazing place because it looks like it's poured concrete the 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 people that live there the uh you know the indigenous people of the area say that it was poured into place in a day and a night mm. By the sky gods Ooh, man. and uh when you look at this stone and this megalithic structure it, you, you just scratch your head and go how in the heck did they build this mm. how in the world mm. could this be possible there's a, a place that you can stand inside of anchor watt that when you look down at it and put your phone down in selfie mode and take the picture of you looking up it's the center it points towards the center of the milky way galaxy wow it's aligned with the center of the Milky Way galaxy ah, that's amazing. from that point on the planet. Wow. It's just, it's mind blowing. And then there's so many other ancient sites and temples. We'll be going through, through the jungle to get to other ancient sites, other ancient temples. We'll come to the river of a thousand lingas where there's carved lingas underneath flowing water, which nobody can figure out how in the heck they mm -hmm. can even do that. And why aren't they worn down from flowing water? There's no weathering. Wow. And then we're going to walk up a thousand steps to the top of a mountain where they carved the top off and, put a gigantic uh megalithic buddha up there hmm. and then we'll uh we'll see so many amazing things we're, we're gonna go to top prom and see the amazing uh hieroglyphs there where you can see dinosaurs walk with men just an amazing it's gonna be an amazing 
life-changing tour again. Yes. And let me tell you something. So the Egypt tour was so amazing and people had such a good time that I, we still have our WhatsApp group. We still talk all the time. Uh, I announced it in that group and there was a large chunk of those people that are coming to Cambodia next year too. Yes. Because they, yeah. they, they know how we roll. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take you to the monks, let you get blessed by a monk. If we get accepted by monks at Kulin Mountain, we'll hike up Kulin Mountain to a 90 meter waterfall. If we get blessed by them and, and they, you know, they they accept us, we may get a chance to swim with the monks there at the top of Kulin Mountain. Just it's going to be a life changing trip, mm -hmm. <clears throat> just a, a mind blowing, life changing trip. Very spiritual yes. journey. So if you guys are interested in that tour, which will be in November of next year, email this email. I'll give you more information about it. Business at Forbidden Knowledge with the number four business at ForbiddenKnowledge.com. She's typing it in the comments again. The link will be up for it soon, but you can get early bird in there if you can before it's sold out. There's only probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 spots left. I think there's only like 15. Okay, yeah. for Cambodia. Yeah, All right, there's so. about 30 left for the Egypt tour next year yeah. and about 15 left for... Wow, that's uh, quick. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's booking fast. Yeah, I see. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Because it's so amazing. Yeah. I mean, we got the proof now. Oh, we <laughs> got, got the proof. Receipts. We got the proof. We got it the receipts. It was a success, okay? <laughs> it was a huge success. Yeah. I remember people were commenting when we would talk about it last year. Yeah. Well, about a year ago. Yeah. They're just they're not going they're to not Egypt. Going. They're just taking the people's money and blah blah. <laughs> okay. Please. Oh <laughs> uh, man. And and so now what what can they say now? Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys like this video too. Like and share so yeah. we can get more people up on um being healthy. Yes. And happy. Absolutely. Please <laughs> and manifesting like manifesting their best lives. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find a clip from Egypt real quick. Oh, uh, okay. Uh let's see if this is it here. <clears throat> Do we have that one that they made? This is the one I believe. Okay. Let's see if this is it here. Oh, Maybe that might be the one it. minute one that you made. This might be one here. I just got to make sure it has the right music in the background because they use some music that we couldn't use. Oh. So hopefully this one does. And if not, I'll just stop it right away. Okay. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> but it was an amazing tour. Hmm. Something that you know is just, uh, you can't Google images, uh, documentaries no, on no, TV. You can't, you can't. The camera phones. The, 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 no, no. The, you you, you can't. Go. You can't understand it until you're there. Yeah, you gotta go. You just can't. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. Let's see if this plays now. Anyway, so that was a quick uh, clip. It was a little bit sped up, but uh, yeah, just a quick because some 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 short highlights of uh, of the trip that we took to uh, to Egypt. And again, uh, go to forbiddenknowledge.com if you want to go to Cambodia. Email business at forbiddenknowledge.com. We yes. got anything else? Um, no. We have up some updates coming. When, when, oh yeah, yeah, when, yeah. So yeah. we're going live on Sunday with a person from our money team that has been working with us uh since we've been you know trying to take this company public so he's going to be joining us on sunday at 5 p.m eastern to uh kind of update all, all of our investors and everything yeah. about uh what's going on with the company the plans for next year etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, make sure you guys tap into that that'll be sunday we're going to go live what time sunday 5 p.m eastern 5 p.m eastern sunday will be live mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it'll be saved to the youtube channel in case you miss it yes okay exactly all right, great. Time to eat. <clears throat> yeah, it's time to eat. We, we're hungry, guys. We have to go. We have to eat. Yes. It's time to go. All right. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Thank you for watching tonight. Thank you for sharing and liking this video. Oh, yeah. And then next week, we're actually interviewing. So I always talk about body work. And uh, so my favorite oh, yeah. type of body work, craniosacral and somatoemotional release work. Yeah. 
he's actually one of the workers that works on my, you know, that does this uh, therapy will be on with us. We're going to be interviewing him. So it's going to be a great one. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't want to miss next week, next week, Friday's biohack episode. Yes. All right. And Thursday, your, your episode. That's oh, gonna be Thursday. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going in on Thursday. You're going in. No holes barred, yeah. <laughs> but it's not going to be all about emotion. It's going to be about facts. Yeah. Well, you always, they know. You always I bring, bring the, the facts. facts. I bring the facts. That's why my YouTube videos don't get deleted because I bring the facts and I use their sources so they can't delete my video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We love you guys. Peace. All right. Peace. You didn't do your thing.